Every decision that you make has consequences, even the smallest decisions. Consequences are more important than decisions. Don't ever make a decision more important than a consequence because decisions give birth to consequences. People normally say, if you make a decision, you got to live with it. That is not true. You live with the consequences. When you are exposed to things, it gives you options. Options give you choices and choices require decisions. It is critically important that you make this next step into sound decisions. Are you making yourself better? Or are you making yourself worse? Are you moving forward or are you moving back? Are you making progress or are you stagnating? Every little decision you make counts. Some people are afraid to make decisions. They just contemplate the options for years and miss the opportunity to change their life because they miss the time factor that is involved in making a great decision. So what you must do before you make any decision in life is don't study the decision. Make sure you exhaust every possible means to study the consequences. Do your research, get information, check all the alternatives, study the options, check those who already made that decision and read their life, study their life, find out everything before you make a decision. Deciding to decide to act is a major, major challenge for all of us. And there are things that happen to us along the way experiences that we have that prevent us from working through the mental block of acting. And so what I want you to think about is what is there that you know you need to do, but for some reason or another, you've been holding back. For some reason or another, you just have not been able to gather your nerves or be able to work through the procrastinating or putting it off or justifying or blaming. Some reason or another, you just haven't done it. Do you know where to hide when discouragement comes flying past your head? Or do you run to the same enemy that is attacking you in an effort to hide? I'm not talking about physical places because the hiding places that we create that destroy us are usually the ones in our heart. Emotional states. When attacks come, I've learned where to run. And the reason that I'm moving forward in my life this year isn't because I won't be attacked, it's because I know what to run to when I am. I don't want to spend the second half of my life repeating the dumb stuff that I did in the first half of my life. Give me the grace, if you will. Give me the mercy, if you please, to make a good decision so that I can eat the fat of the land. I'm not stupid. I just made stupid decisions. I'm not bad. I just made bad decisions. I'm not weak. I just made weak decisions. There are a lot of things you think about you. It's not really you. It's your decision. When you acknowledge God in all your ways, He will direct your path. But too often, we make our plans without consulting God. Then we ask Him to bless those plans. We wonder why it's a struggle, why it feels like it's always uphill. We have it backwards. We're making a move and then asking God for help. The right way is to ask God first. Some people don't want to be for you, and that's okay. You don't need them to fulfill your destiny. You have to set your face. The people that need to be for you will be for you. God has already lined up the right people, people that will celebrate you, people that stick with you through thick and thin. 
A lot of people never try anything differently because they have been convinced by people in their lives that they value that they can't do it. They're living within the context of the opinions that other people have of them. The low expectations. You need to be patient with the process and not enthralled with the promise. You compromise the rehearsal time and bought the tuxedo for the recital. You want the accruements of success and that's what's killing you. Now you look like something that you're not. Somebody say wrong focus. Many people doubt themselves because when they thought about doing something at some critical point in their lives, somebody they respected and honored, somebody they believed in, somebody that they loved, someone they trusted said, you can't do that. Most of the people who really ain't got it, they go out of their way to try and show people that they have it. The more you go out of your way to show me that you have it, you confirm to me that you really don't got it because it's perception versus reality. Because you pulling up to the club in the nicest car don't mean you actually got gas money. As you begin to look at your emotional, your spiritual and intellectual development, how many books did you read? How many classes did you take to begin to develop yourself professionally, to improve your craft or your skill? How many new things did you learn? Just take some personal inventory, just thinking, just thinking, just thinking. Beginning to know yourself, what are the things about your past that has influenced you right now? You see, a dream, when you get it, will encourage you. There's something about a dream that brings encouragement and joy to people's lives. It gives you excitement. It encourages you. The people who are discouraged are the people who don't have a dream. Because when you have a dream, it makes you get up in the morning. It makes you put your clothes on and go to work because you've got a dream. And a dream has the power to encourage you. You have not because you ask not. It didn't say you have not because your credit ain't straight. It simply say you have not because you ask not. But you don't ask because you ain't got that together. When you ask God for something, quick, trip it. He got it from here. The same wind blows on us all. The wind of disaster, the wind of opportunity, the wind of change. The wind when it's upside down, the wind when it's favorable and unfavorable. The same wind blows on us all. The economic wind, the social wind. The same wind blows on everybody. The difference in where you arrive in one year, three years, five years, the difference in arrival is not the blowing of the wind, but the set of the sick. Joy can only really come to my life when I am focused on what God is doing in this moment. And I cannot focus on what God is doing in this moment in my life if I'm consumed with what he's doing in somebody else's or if I'm still in regret and bitterness about what happened three years ago or three months ago. A lot of our lack of joy is really not about possession, it's about position. What I mean is this, he set joy before him. It's not a question of God's presence, it's about yours. Are you present in this moment? You can't live off of yesterday's manna and expect to have victory today. Yesterday's information may not work today. Stay open for change. Be willing to try something new. What made you successful five years ago may not make you successful today. Have the attitude, God, I'm ready for new things. If you don't innovate, you will evaporate. You can't rely on what got you to where you are to keep you where you are. The world is changing. You can't afford to sit back on autopilot and just coast, do things the same way. You'll get left behind. But if we're not conscious of dropping a thought or a behavior that's no longer needed, we take old thoughts, old behaviors that serve an old version of ourselves into trying to become the new version of ourselves. So ask yourself that question. What do I need to drop that's no longer needed? Is it a person? Is it a thought? Is it a behavior? Or is it an emotion? 
If someone is controlling you, it's not their fault, it's yours. You have to put your foot down, make a change. This is your hour. I know people that spend more time worried about what other people think about them than they do pursuing their own dreams and goals. And it's great to get free from addictions, but one of the greatest freedoms is to get free from people. Being successful, y'all, is not a magic trick. You have to learn the principles of success. You can be successful at anything. You really can, man. I don't have no education. I'm telling you, God has an incredible life. All you got to do is ask him for. Be willing to put in the work. But now this work part is hard. Success is hard. But let me ask you a question. Ain't not being successful hard, too? You cannot reach your destiny dragging people along, trying to keep everyone happy. Life is like an elevator. The higher you go up, like those spaceships, they let certain stuff off because it's too heavy. Yet some people just too heavy when it comes to drama. You want, when you have goals and dreams, and you want to fine tune your life and approach the life, you want to create a drama free zone. What else? is in you. Who are you ignoring? Is there a version of you you're ignoring? So think about that stuff and really begin to ask yourself, am I satisfied where I am? And start listening to that voice inside of you saying, hey, listen, listen, it's whispering right now, but it's calling you. It's saying there's something more. There's something else. There's something else you can get. Deciding to keep your word. If you just decide, I'm going to keep my word. If I say something, I'm going to do it regardless. Being more considerate, more disciplined, being more adventurous. Find something that you can look at your life that you say, hey, I know I've got a problem in this area, being late. I need to take care of that. Procrastinating, I need to deal with that. For things to change, you have to change. I was hoping the government would change and taxes would change. I wished for everything to change. And my teacher said, no, Mr. Owen, for things to change for you, you have to change. Don't Wish it was easier, wish you were better. Don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. And here's the big one. Don't wish for less problems, wish for more skills. You simply need more skills. Stop telling the old story. Here's the truth, nobody cares. No one cares if you've had a setback, no one cares if you had a victory, and none of those failures, none of those setbacks, none of those victories, and that old character you keep playing, is the very thing that will prevent you from becoming this new version of you. Not taking care of business, being seriously not serious, creating an imbalance in my life where I'm spending more time looking at television or having social fun and not spending enough time working on me. See, most people, ladies and gentlemen, spend more time working on their jobs than they spend working on themselves. It's a story if you're stuck. It's an old story you're telling with an old character that was last year's version, last decade's version. Who's the new character? What's the new script? What's the new story? Your personal philosophy is like a guidance system that helps you make decisions what to do, what not to do. From the information you get and what you learn and what you know, we decide. Maybe your philosophy would have been uh, five years ago never to attend seminars like this. You just didn't go. Now, five years later, here you are. Something happened along the way. So now that little amendment in your philosophy, you now say, I'm going to regularly go because it doesn't take but a few ideas to make a great difference in your income, personal life, social life, and all the rest. A change of mind, a change of idea. The more we learn, the more we know, the better we're able to make better decisions. So what is the worst thing that can happen? I want you to visualize that, experience that, feel the nervousness and the discomfort. And the more you run it in your mind, the less power that it will have. Your philosophical guidance system does two things. Number one, helps you to see the dangers on one side, so you can avoid those. But here's what else your guidance system does. Helps you to see the opportunities on the other side so that you can expand those, maximize those. And here's what that's called. The game of life is to minimize the dangers and maximize the opportunities. And the more we know and the more we learn, the more experience we gather helps us to keep continually adjusting our philosophical guidance system. 
so that we minimize more dangers, maximize more opportunities. That's really the game of life. Stop hanging out with people that make you look good by how little they know. And so you can condescend to them so that you can be a great fish in a small pond. Get around people who make you feel stupid because they stretch you. They make you grow. They make you read. They make you study. They stretch you. They expose you to great information. Then you can make great decisions. No matter what's going on in your life, you can be happy and so blessed that people will envy you and envy your life. No matter what's going on in your life. Now that blessing is attached to a moral excellence or a virtue of soul called the poor in spirit, which really means the humble minded, those who are totally dependent on God and those who don't think that they're better than other people. Have you ever had anybody turn on you? It's, it's one thing to have an enemy. I don't have no problem with that because if I know you my enemy, I dress for you. I dress, I come in there prepared because I already know you and me, we don't do each other. We don't do that. So, okay. But the heart cracks when somebody who fought with you now fights against you. The future is actually the place where there is threat. And it's always going to be there. So what do you do? You make sacrifices in the present so that the future is better. Everyone does that. That's what you're doing right now. That's what you're doing here. It's amazing. You can bargain with reality. You can forestall gratification now. And it'll pay off at a place and time that doesn't even exist yet. Who would have believed that? It's like that's a miracle that that occurs. Learn number one from your own experiences. Learn number two from other people's experiences. If you want to live a dynamic life, multiplying your income, multiplying your future, be a good student. If a good idea comes your way, write it down, then ponder it, then perhaps go do it. Your philosophy comes from what you learn, comes from what you know, comes from other people's experiences. I want you to focus on what does it take when you look at your life, very important to focus on the examples of other people of what it takes to live the kind of life that you desire. You want to make it in life? Perseverance is important. Persistence is important. And you got to believe in you. And you got to trust God that things are going to work out. You can do goal setting with a pencil, but you have to do goal getting with your legs. And it's the action that separates us. The greatest gap in this world is the gap between knowing and doing. Knowing is goal setting. Doing, now that's goal achieving. You gotta take action. This attitude is rarely found. Well, anyway, if you've been troubled by the old familiar human malady of running up too many roads and trying to run up more than one at a time, pick the one out of all of them which seems to offer the most promise, forget all the rest, and dig a deep straight highway to your goal in life. You'll be amazed at how quickly it can be reached and the time will pass anyway. A lot of people think that what's possible in their lives is strictly determined by where they came from and what happened to them. No, you have no idea how far you can go, how far you can stretch, how far you can reach. So you've got to take that thing and hold on to that and figure out, well, how can I apply this into my life? You know, take this, this might be the day mentality that everything comes together for me. You don't know what's possible in your life. You have no idea how far you can reach, how far you can stretch. You have no idea. The happiest people on earth are those who are emotionally involved in what they're doing. This calm, cool, collected bit is all right for cows, camels, and turtles, but it'll never produce a great sermon, symphony, business, piece of architecture, painting, marriage, or the miracle of a child. When you lose the excitement and heightened feeling of emotion in what you're doing, you'd best look around for something else. Humans have an unreal capacity to get great at things, even if they don't have a natural talent for it, if they're immersed in it, and to learn something and acquire a ton of knowledge in a short period of time as well. Society is conspiring all the time in our culture to completely distract you so you never win. And they get these different things on television and our phones and in our lives to just get us distracted so we never get obsessed, we never get laser focused for an extended period of time. People without vision, perish and they die in a life of mediocrity. They die 
with their dreams still in them. They died living a misplaced life, making the cemetery rich in Miles Monroe angry. So for me, my brain saying, that's it, right there. Move as fast as a rocket, Mel. I wanted to change my life. And I think most people that are miserable or that are, that are really like dying to be great, we want to change. We want to live a better life. We want to create more for our families. We want to be happier. The, the desire is there. It's about how do you go from knowledge to action. If you do something often enough, a ratio will appear. Key phrase, if you do something often enough, a ratio will appear. It's amazing. In baseball, we call it batting average. If you talk to 10 people, one says yes. Now the ratio has begun. One out of 10. Here's something interesting about the law of averages. Once it starts, it tends to continue. I talk a lot about your instincts and inner wisdom. When you set goals, when you have an intention on something that you want to change about your life, your brain helps you. What it does is it opens up a checklist and then your brain goes to work trying to remind you of that intention that you set. And it's really important to develop the skill of knowing how to hear that inner wisdom and that intention kicking in and leaning into it quickly. If you're in a negative vibration, the only thing you can attract to you is something negative. How do you change? Decision what the thing you come. What's the thing you come here for now? We are at the moment the cook ticket people say all the time their life is short let me tell you something life can be long you bury your dreams you're quiet this is life gets long see it eleven two minute of you being what you sweetest doing whatever you think with them the what can Go by quick, write what about the last two minutes on the trimmel does that not steam like it does by for like for our right. So if you are enjoy it, it's short, if it's painful, it's long, it can be long. You what a life, what feel like it's flying by you. What a life like I have right now where I go. Can I just process passes guy? Just process pass it's by good, it's so great, it's so rewarding. So award by I don't really want to press pass because I know it can decision the what you are sweating on what is possible are texting me they did not submit it by reason last night i am coming full of six job it's what decision it's is decision to finally it's a decision it's a license decision stop worrying about what you think Thank you for watching, like, share and subscribe.